All right, so let's go to ZBrush and now go Import. Desktop, Blender to ZBrush. Test object. Click and drag it out and hit Edit. So these are three individual boxes, but in ZBrush it understands it is one whole part because we joined them back in Blender. So that's very common in all programs. Let's turn on Polyframe. You can see the colors of these and if we want to separate them we go to Polygroups and hit Auto Groups. Now we have three individual colors. Does that make it separate? Sort of. You now have the ability to use Control and Shift to work on individual parts if needed. Now get kind of used to the fact that you can hit Control and Shift and practice uh, hiding and getting the ones that you want. In other words, if I want just the purple one, how do I do that? I can click just on the purple one. Let's say I want to get the other two back. I can hold Control and Shift again and click on the purple one and the other two pop up. If I want to separate the red one from here, I can use Control and Shift on the green. So that's really wacky in some cases with new students. So just practice that for a second. Now under Subtool, we have one object. We want three separate ones. Well, quite easy. We can just go in here and say Group Split. You had to use the polygroups first before this will work. We'll hit OK. Another thing that you want to use all the time is symmetry. Now let's look at symmetry for a second. So let's go to transform and activate symmetry and we'll go to X symmetry. And X symmetry on the one object, let's say this purple cube, you'll see that the symmetry point on one side of the cube is right but over here it actually wants to use the symmetry over here on the other side in order to work this. Well we could fix the symmetry on any one part by just going into transform and going into set pivot. Okay, We can also hide the other subtools so we can work on just one. Now this is just core fundamental stuff. Let's uh, hit divide. So I can hit divide in here. I'm going to keep smooth on. And we'll divide this one up to five. Now let's go six. You can see the poly count over here on uh, my monitor. It's not going to show up because I'm using a low level uh, screen capturing. So. But we'll go up to five. Next, let's go to the next one. Again, transform, set pivot, clear out the other one. And this time, if I want it to maintain its crispness, its crisp corner, I'll have to take off smooth. So let's see what happens when I don't do that. Let's keep smooth on and subdivide. It'll turn to a ball. Well, in some cases, you know, that's pretty good. I use a ball for a lot of things for sculpting low-level geometry. Especially this sort of ball because it doesn't have any weak point in the ball. It doesn't have any extraordinary vertice with a whole bunch of uh, triangles going into the top. So this is a very nice sculpting sphere. Control Z. Let's take off smooth and then divide it again six times. Hey, last one. Again, set pivot. This one didn't move very much, and we're going to divide this up to six times. Notice I kept smooth on because it had to brace corner. Well, why did I bring in three cubes and what's going on here? We're going to look at the sculptability of these things. Okay, that's what our number one goal is to make good sculptable geometry. So let's take the standard brush. Incidentally, if you have a Wacom drawing tablet and you have this thing here, you can put it on brush size and then you can wheel around with your finger and make it bigger and smaller for the brush. Okay? Let's see? Ooh. Hmm. 
Good. Now, if that wasn't on, <laughs> because sometimes it's not, for some odd reason, when you first get ZBrush working, there is in here, remember where this is hit out, Z plugin miscellaneous utilities, there's brush right here. And if we hold Control and Alt and click on this, we can set this to the left bracket and Control and Alt over on this one, and we can set it to the right bracket on the keyboard, and that will automatically fix it so you can use the wheel on your Wacom drawing tablet. Also, you can use the bracket keys to increase and decrease the size of the brush. All right, let's just kind of hog down on this thing as far as a little basic sculpt. Okay, intensity is right here, so you can make that as intense as possible. And you can see that it's just adding a little bit more to the goo that you're applying onto this. And if we subdivide this up to, let's say eight, you can see that it's much smoother. Okay, immediately let's keep all the settings and let's go on to the next cube. Does it matter which one? Nope. Okay, let's look at the sculptability here. And let's go back and divide it up to eight. Again, let's do the same thing. First, the underlying sculptability. Notice this one's at six, and it looks as good as this one on eight. Okay, that's important. Just kind of notice that difference. Okay, that means if I subdivide this one up to eight, it should look even more amazing. Now, let's back these down again. So, we go like this. We'll go to about four on each one. Wow, I can't even recognize what it is anymore. Okay, somewhat different. I can at least recognize that it was an S at one time. Well, let's turn on polyframe and see which ones are which, shall we? So if I lower this one all the way down, this is the one that actually has the edge loops around the areas around the outside edge, okay? Now, is it smart to be able to do that? In some cases, that is very good to do. But you gotta watch out in the fact that if you don't add a couple edge loops in here to begin with, you'll never get the underlying geometry that you need for sculptability. And it'll always have weaker resolution in the center and stronger resolution on the outside to hold detail. So it'll always have nicer resolution here. And we can see that at level seven. Well, like five. Five, if I sculpt over here, you'll see that it's quite smooth, and over here in the center, it's not smooth. That differentiation between smooth and unsmooth will hurt your sculptability later on. Okay, here. If we lower this one all the way down, this was the box with no edge loops at all. Okay, so I had to go clean up to level eight just to get higher geometry. But you'll notice that if I sculpt anywhere on it, it's always the same resolution. If I sculpt here, if I sculpt here, here, it's always the same resolution. So this is a very good form to sculpt on. This is almost the preferred state. Now let's go up to the top one. Let's say I wanted a square with a little bit more rounded corners. I could do the alternative method. 
in this case my underlying geometry had tight corners and then I put edge loops in the center for the uniformity. This time if I sculpt anywhere it should be the same resolution and it will be tighter on the corners just a tad bit. Now a box you have the option to turn off smooth and unsmooth right? Let's look at um, this box for example here. Let's lower all the way down and then hit delete higher. If I wanted rounded corners all I do is have to do this. I can leave the smooth off and divide it a couple times. Then turn smooth on and divide. So now I have the same effect as if I put the uniformity and the edge loops in. And in this case you're going to find out there is perfect uniformity just about. If I lower it down you'll see that level 3, level 4, level 5 all have very good uniformity and until you hit 6 then you can start to see the difference between the tight and the loose structure here. Cool. Now I know this was boring as far as you know like oh I'm just putting a cube in here what's the point but really this is the lesson that always gets skipped half the time with the student and they're just like let's go into ZBrush and play around. <laughs> but you gotta know the underlying structure of your geometry before you get good sculpts. I'll be able to sculpt on the edge here and it looks just as good as this. It's cool stuff. Alright, now that we've understand the very, very small principles of this, let's go into the next lesson where we're using a little bit more complex geometry than a cube.